Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Longines, one of my personal favorites from the brand with the Heritage Classic Sector, this one coming in black. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com. So in this video, deep dive review on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end. And then also throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can learn more, purchase the watch, and book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. The field of watchmaking is one that is deeply rooted in history, with many brands being around for the past century, if not longer. But when you're trying to pinpoint brands that are specifically the strongest in the area of their history, their archive, and prominence over the years, Longines is one of those brands that is simply hard to rival. With roots back to 1832, their archive and what they've been able to deliver from a design perspective has been able to be maintained while the brand has, of course, changed in ownership as well as direction over the years. And one of the best executions of this is when looking at their Heritage Collection. And within that collection, one of my personal favorites is the Heritage Classic Sector. One of my favorite watches that the brand makes and perhaps the best sector dial on the market, all things considered. The model that we're gonna be looking at here today is a fairly new addition to the lineup up with the Heritage Classic Sector in black. Taking a look at the Heritage Classic Sector on the wrist, we have case dimensions of 38.5 millimeters with its diameter, 10.9 millimeters with its case height, and a lug-to-lug -lug dimension of 47 millimeters. The vintage inspiration is easily recognizable while inspecting the case with the lugs in particular exhibiting these characteristics. This family of watches and the sector dial stems from a model from the 1930s from the brand. This version is going to be sized up quite a bit, but in terms of wearability, this one wears quite well on the wrist. 38.5 millimeters is not so far gone from the original while still remaining pretty true to a modern context and demands that might be warranted here. The lug to lug distance doesn't overstep and the thickness is going to be rather true considering that there's a box sapphire crystal on this one which will be taking up some of that thickness so some of the thickness is not going to actually be felt in its wear. The proportions are quite good between the lugs, case, bezel, and dial and I think this watch wears pretty close to a restrained 38 and a half millimeters with its size. With this being the case I could see this working on wrists around 14 and a half centimeters up to around 19 centimeters, especially with its versatile looks going in its favor as well. This piece is operated by a sign push pull crown located at the typical three o'clock position. It's fairly flat against the case, but it is easy to engage. Hand winding is done in the first position closest to the case while setting the time can be done in the crown's only other position at the second point. Aiding with precision setting is the hacking second feature, which stops the movement while adjusting the hands in the proper time. With water resistant capabilities of 30 meters or three bars. This piece isn't really suited for water activities, but is protected from splashing in rain. Although most of the attention is going to be directed towards the dial with this watch, much of the beauty still lies with the simplicity of the case and finishing. We have a uniform brush finish applied to the case surfaces, except for the case back, which is polished, specifically those spots around the ends of the lugs that are going to be in contact with your skin while wearing the piece. I think this adds a lot of level of refinement to the overall design, which should be expected from a brand like Longines and their position in the market. This particular variant has a beads of rice style bracelet installed between the 19 millimeter lugs. Unlike many bracelets that are using a flushed end link at the installment point of the case, Longines keeps things in a vintage theme going with the bracelet and the straight end piece that leaves a space between it and the case. For some, this is a polarizing idea, but it does really evoke those classic 1930s and 1940s vibes that this one is certainly going for. In terms of finishing on the bracelet, we have alternating finishes of brush and high polish applied to the beaded links, giving the bracelet a nice visual balance between casual and dress. The bracelet terminates at a milled folding clasp with a two button release along the sides, which also being signed, also is going to contain a few points of micro adjustment with sizing Sizing elsewhere is going to be done with a pin system, but very breathable bracelet, very well done. Whenever you're dealing with these fine link style bracelets, the concern is always, will it be comfortable on the wrist? Will it pull hair? For this one, it's very well executed. Like many of the other swatch group propositions in terms of bracelet in this price category, this one is well worth it. And to add to the combination of just versatility that will come with this piece uh, when you're dealing with different straps. Now transitioning back to the front of the watch where we are met with the 
box sapphire crystal, which is treated with several layers of anti-reflective coating on the underside. It provides clear view to the black and slate gray sector dial below. Sector dials inherently have a vintage quality to them, mostly as a result of the period where they rose to prominence in the first half of the 20th century, with Longines being one of the leading purveyors of this style. Again, the beauty of this model manifests itself through the simplicity of its design. And I think this is one of the better executions of a sector dial, especially considering the price and the range in which it falls. The outer section of the sector dial is a dark gray with a soft radio grain texture applied to it, giving it a semi-reflective property. It's within this part of the dial that we find the minute track printed in white with Arabic numerals at the quarter hours and long hash marks for the remaining hours. Moving inward, we have the main section of the dial, which is black with a very fine granular texture to it that can only be fully appreciated under a loop or with a macro lens. Running through the center section of the dial further is a printed logo at the top of the dial. This dial also featuring a crosshair design, a design that is commonly found on the sector dials and really is going to be in alignment with the period in which this one is stemming its inspiration. Positioned just below the central stick hands is a stepped sub-second dial, which adds a third level of texture, this time in the form of classic concentric circles. Overall, this layout is very clean, but mostly symmetrical, particularly with the absence of a date window. I'm very happy to see that Longines did not feel the need to do that. Simply put, this dial is beautifully balanced. And turning this watch over, we have a solid snap on case back with a large winged hourglass logo engraving right in the middle with some reference text inscribed along the outside of that. Housed inside is the automatic Longines caliber L893.5, a movement that is based on the ETA L31A91. Now just providing some context with Longines and their movements, now being a member of the Swatch Group certainly has its perks in that regard, but Longines is uniquely positioned within the group structure to get proprietary movements made by ETA for Longines exclusively. As a result of this, you're going to get some higher grade calibers, well finished for the price, some up resistance against magnetism, and some nice lengthy power reserves with a beat frequency that is going to be a little bit different than the norm. So this movement operates at three and a half hertz or 25,200 vibrations per hour with an extended power reserve of 72 hours and features an upgraded balance assembly which moves away from the traditional metallic alloys and uses silicium instead for that hairspring, which has natural anti-magnetic properties and is more resistant to wear than traditional watchmaking alloys. Now this 25,200 vibration per hour beat rate is typically exclusive to that of the coaxial family of calibers, but this is going to offer two different types of benefits. One is going to allow the extension of that power reserve and the maximization of that mainspring. But in addition to that, you're not sacrificing the same sweep that comes with some of those 21,600 vibration per hour drop beat rate with other Swatch Group brands. On top of all of this, you're typically going to have some nice precision and accuracy with these movements. This particular variant that we're looking at here, we tested at a full wind, five different positions, was running at just plus three seconds off from perfect time of day. Although this is just anecdotal evidence, so don't expect that every single time, uh, but it is good to see that Longines is doing some nice regulation and getting some nice out of the box type of accuracy. In regards to this movement, it operates again, three hertz. It's going to have hacking and hand winding, hacking stopping the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and has that power reserve of approximately 72 hours. All right, so now to unpack looking at this Longines Heritage Classic sector. Now, personally, just in interjecting some of my own personal opinion, I think this is my favorite sector dial on the entire market, all things considered. Now, there are different variations and styles out there, but when you factor in the history, the pedigree that comes with Longines, as well as the price in which this one is falling, the reliable movement, and the design that I think just has beautiful symmetry, this is probably my favorite option of any sector dial on the market, all things considered. Now, I have covered the silver dial version in the past. That was really the first entry door into to this world, but this black dial variant is still equally as well done from a design perspective. Now, there are some things that some enthusiasts are not gonna maybe like, the water resistance, the 19 millimeter lugs, and maybe that bracelet not being for everyone are probably a few of the common things that I'll maybe see come up. But from a finishing perspective, this is an impressive watch for around $2,000. And although it does have a design style that might not be able to make up its mind fully, whether it's trying to be a dress piece or an everyday piece, no matter the environment in which you decide to wear this watch, it's never going going to look out of place. And that also goes with the strap options you decide to pair with this one down the road. I'm just a huge fan of this watch. And if you're trying to get an idea of uh, maybe the image of what Longines does so well, it's that heritage collection. And within that collection, I think this is near the top. 
All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. Also, if you're in the market for this watch, it is available on teddybaldestar.com. We're a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer a factory warranty for all the products that we're offering. And nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back in the content that we're creating here, as well as on our main channel to try to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.